the starting lineup of your favorite show. And producer, 5'11 from Blanchester, the cow killer, Casey McCollister. And comic engineer, standing at 4'8, the pride of the west side, Elliot Rearing. Well, 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 welcome into a Friday edition of Off the Bench presented by United Dairy Farmers. And we come your way every single day from 10 a A to 12 p ish. Uh, Today's going to be one of those ish days. We're not 100% sure, uh, but I do know one thing. We will be on the radio today. For those that obviously watched yesterday, you obviously didn't listen to the radio yesterday with us on it because of the Cincinnati Reds were supposed to play a baseball game. They did not. We'll get to headlines in just a moment. But the most beautiful thing that there is right now is, again, I know I'm a nerd, perhaps, but I just love the Masters. I don't know why I love the Masters as much as I do, but I love the Masters. I have a, a gigantic uh, computer here to my left. I can see the chat really well today, but I also can see golf. There's, there's golf on the TVs behind me. How I'm going to focus up today and actually pay attention to, uh, to what I should be doing, which is host a show, I don't know. But I'm going to do my best. Uh, but the Masters is underway. But the biggest storyline in the Southwest Ohio area right now is Kentucky. They got their oh. guy. They got their guy, uh, Mark Pope. That, that's who they wanted. That's exactly number one choice. We're going to push out the national championship winner so we can get Mark Pope. Mark Pope. Mark Pope. Hey, I got, a, uh, I got some good news, though, for Kentucky fans here in just a moment in regards to Mark Pope. We got the Masters, as, uh, as I had just alluded to. We have uh, New Heights. They just decided to come into town. You know, the New Heights podcast. We all know who they are. Let's not act like we don't. Taylor Swift. Don't think she made an appearance. Shocking. Shocking. I can't believe it. But... Maybe next year, you know? Maybe next year. <laughs> we do that a lot around here, don't we? Uh, and then we got the Reds and White Sox. They play some baseball games. Hopefully the Reds can find a way to win some more baseball games and lose against a team in Chicago on the south side. Uh, before we get much farther, though, gentlemen, we don't have the left side of the room today. They are, uh, they are out and about. Working is what I'm being told. But you guys are here. You're better than ever. How you feeling? Yeah, unfortunately, I think they're trying to pick up some of the stuff at Prasco, and I yeah. believe it's raining. That's so the story. That's not great for them. Uh, that's unfortunate. But me, I, I th- I'm doing okay. Uh, I, I head out to Indianapolis right after the show. We're going to go to a concert, my father and I. Nice. So that, that's what I've got planned on the day. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Other than that, not much. I, not much. I, I watched the Masters all night long until they suspended play somewhere around 8 p.m., Yep. And uh, this morning, unfortunately for me, I did have a couple bets out there, and they lost. Shane Lowry bogeyed 18, and Tiger bogeyed 18. So, and I'll get into that in a second. Tough. Casey, did you watch any golf yesterday? No, not a single bit. Not, uh, a, well, not, even, not even a single not, shot. Not a single shot. You guys were all very hyper-focused on the, on the Masters, yeah. making bets. I was in here trying to uh, learn a new skill here, trying to – to uh, make our, our lives a little easier with the graphics and yeah. stuff like that. Golf, uh, do though. Some, do, Mostly yeah, golf. I was doing some golf stuff, uh, future plans for our broadcast. Super excited about that. Uh, I'm just not a golf guy, to be honest with you. Like, I could care, like, I could just care less about it. So it just didn't interest me. I wasn't interested in placing a bet because it just feels like you could just throw a dart and you'd land on something. And Sure. But yeah, I don't know. I, I, I if, if even if you're not a golf fan, tune into the Masters for a little bit. Just tune in for a little bit. Sunday. And, what what should it, it, I be looking Sunday. for? What you're, what should I be looking you, for to be the most entertained? Like, well, we got Fleetwood up here on, on our TV that the, the viewers can't see. He, well, he's yeah. lining up for a putt. So, right. So this is. Yeah. So, Casey, this is he's going to make this putt because pro golfers have never missed putts this this far away. 
at this distance, and he's going to make it, and you're going to watch him do it. And then about three hours into the – oh, he stepped away. Oh, and then three yeah, hours and then three television. hours into the broadcast, Casey. This is the best part. You start you, – your eyes start to close a little bit, and you take your master's nap. Every, every single week, you, you start the you're, – you're excited. You got your popcorn. You're watching the masters. You're watching the best of the best. And then the sounds of the birds and the trees and the, and the, and the visuals of the azaleas. Oh, he just missed. He just missed that putt. Golfers never miss at that distance. <laughs> and, and basically, it lulls you to sleep. But it's the best sleep of your life. That's what you do. It. You turn it on the TV. You pump it up full volume. And you just, you just become one with Augusta. That's what you should do. Listen, when I watch golf, I will, I will say this. It makes me want to play. It makes me want to go out to a course yes. and hit a few shots. Go, to, go, go get a driver out and just let it rip. Well, here's the best but, thing. About, here, but I, I, I couldn't watch that. Like, it makes me want to go do it. It doesn't make me want to sit Well, here's the best thing about golf, Casey. If I gave you nine years, who knows what you could accomplish? Nine <laughs> years knows? unlimited funds, unlimited resources, and you Maybe. say you want to go out and play golf. I could do whatever they're doing. I don't want to watch it, but I can do it. And you can with nine maybe. years. As an amateur, maybe. Correct. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Casey, I think it's fair to say that if you don't have any interest in golf, that's more than fine. There's no 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 doubt that uh, I understand you like action packed sports. You you like you like action. You want you want, you know, like uh, up and down, up and down, up and down, high scoring affairs. Yeah. Which kinda, is why you're yeah. a big FCC guy, right? Of course. Yeah. I mean, there's always action going on. The ball is constantly moving around. There's there's uh, there are plenty of plays, sure. one way crossings, to put it. and all that sort of fun stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's one way to put it. Yeah. Um, before we get into the headlines, we get into to Mark Pope, which again I think is a it's, it's a huge story. It's a big story. What do you do when your when your large university decides to to push somebody out? Uh, what do you do when everybody says no? I think you found out. The University of Kentucky just did it. And we will uh, we'll have that discussion in just a moment. But before we do that, um, I just want to say uh, there is this notion out there yeah. that golf is boring. And I don't think I can change anyone's mind, and I'm not going to no. try to change anyone's mind. All I'm going to say to answer Casey's question and for everyone else that is maybe interested, just don't watch any of it until turn it on around uh, Sunday at like 4.30 and, yep. and enjoy your two hours of just – just the, the action pack, come down to the end. Hopefully it's close. You're going to basically see guys that have been doing something their entire lives be very, very nervous. And, uh, you know, let's face it. We, for some reason, I talked about this yesterday, unfortunately, with the O.J. Simpson news, that we like train wrecks. We like true crime. We like people failing for whatever reason uh, as a society and as human beings. And I think that there's nothing better than watching someone crumble down the stretch of a major championship, just melt. Uh, and we've seen it time and time again at Augusta. Uh, just make sure you start paying attention before hole 12. Last night I got on YouTube right mm -hmm. before bed. And I said, I want to watch the, the end of the Danny Willett masters. Yes. If you go to their n no free ads, but if you go to their YouTube, they have literally every broadcast from every year, the final round. So I watched Jordan Spieth blow a five shot lead in a 40 minute stretch to Danny Willett. And it was incredible to, it was incredible to watch. Could you relate to that, you think, or no? Well, I could relate to it in that I, I, I choked down the stretch. Yeah. I couldn't relate to it that he's shooting like five under and then he sure. finishes it like one under. Fair enough. So that's where I lose it. But headlines around sports. Let's do it. Uh, Major League Baseball, the Orioles. They obliterate the Red Sox nine to four. Jackson Holiday unfortunately remained hitless. He remained hitless, but in his four at bats, he did come across. Uh, the plate to score two times. The Phillies, they beat the Pirates 5-1. to one. I think three home runs helped the Phillies do that in the Battle of Pennsylvania. Uh, the Athletics, they beat the Texas Rangers 1-0. How about that? The Rangers have now lost 4-5. Well, don't look now. The Sacramento A's have won 4-5. World Series? We don't know. Uh, Royals, they dismantle the Houston Astros 13-3. They sweep the Astros, and the Royals have won seven in a row. That is a team that I find similarly to the Reds. Uh, a lot of young talent. There's a couple veteran leaders on that team. I think they can make some noise. I think the Royals can make some noise. The Braves, they lose 16-4, to and it mm. looks like the Mets are white hot. Mets come into town, they beat us, and, and they stay red hot all the way through. Uh, going around the NBA now, the Warriors – 
They beat the Blazers 100-92. The Kings fall to the Pelicans 135-123. The Kings lose their guaranteed playoff spot with the loss. The Western Conference playoffs, the, the last three spots, the Kings, the Warriors, the Lakers, are all 45-35. and 35. Those are the 8, 9, and 10 seeds. So we're, we're fighting for the, uh, the play-in tournament on the Western Conference. Uh, the, by the way, I, I usually make fun of the NBA here. Having 10 teams have a, like a, a sizable record above 500, that's pretty significant. So shout out to the Western Conference. Uh, the, what did I have? The Masters. Sorry. That's right. Bryson DeChambeau leads the pack at seven under par. That's sad to see. Some say it's a par 66 for him. Uh, that's what, at least what he says. But, and, he, and he looked like it yesterday. Sometimes Bryson looks good. Scotty Scheffler, he's in second place at six under par. Rory, if you're a fan of Rory McIlroy, he's at one under par. Tiger bogeyed 18, as I mentioned this morning, to finish his opening round at plus one. Phil Mickelson, plus one as well. Jordan Spieth, four shots away from last place with a six over par first opening round. Tough, tough, tough there for, for my guy Jordo. Uh, Bengals news. Per Jay Morrison, Tier Tart had a mere 576,000 guaranteed. Five hundred and let's just I'll, start that one over. Let's redo it. Let's redo yeah. it. Casey, Ready, can we, can we get the redo sounder? Uh, Thank you. Per J. Morrison, Tier Tart had a mere five hundred and seventy-six thousand dollar guaranteed contract, but clearly the Bengals saw or heard something on his visit that made them not want him. So uh, just some just yeah. some news there, Casey. Yeah, I mean it was just you know it was a a guy that many people wanted in the building. Um, the only nose tackle that was really available that had some upside to him. Uh, clearly, there was some something that happened on that visit. Same with Mackay Becton that they just did not like. Yep. Um, reasons why they didn't sign him. Um, but I just found it interesting that, I mean, he didn't get signed really anywhere to a, a deal that he wanted. I mean, he was looking for seven, eight million dollars, and he gets what a million? Yeah. So that's. <laughs> That's some, tough. Some character issues, maybe. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Perhaps. We don't want to come to that conclusion. Uh, that's pretty much it for sports around the world. We're going to talk about Mark Pope in a second. Uh, I've got some nuggets on new heights as well. Uh, but that's it, Trace, as we wind down this first segment. That we do. Uh, when we come back, I am going to get all in to the situation that is University of Kentucky basketball and Mark Pope and why I think sometimes unanswered prayers are the best things that ever happened to you in your life. That and more. After this on 1410 Wing AM. All right, welcome back in. This is Off the Bench presented by United Dairy Farmers. I'm Trace Fowler, joined as always with Elliot Rearing and Casey McAllister. And uh, gentlemen, sometimes in life I had mentioned to it uh, before we went to break there that you know, there's, there's, there's been plenty of times where in my life I've wanted one thing to happen, it didn't happen, I was upset about it, and then something else ultimately comes about because of it, and you realize on the back end that you're really thankful that uh, what you wanted didn't happen. And obviously there's a song that was made about that. Mm. Now, if we're on the radio, we might even be able to play that song, but we can't do that because we are a YouTube show Correct. where these little pores that are on the internet that don't have the ability to do fun things and play fun songs. But, yeah. uh, but we all know what that song was. You have a, you, you have a rendition of that at no, all? I don't no, have any, I don't have any rendition. Okay, no rendition. But let's get into <laughs> it. Let's get into it. Um, you know, this morning I, I, was, uh, I, I was kind of scrolling through the, the World Wide Web, and of course you have University of Kentucky basketball uh, fanatics uh, is what we'll use the term of. And they, there's two sides of the aisle right now. There's one side that's trying to have an open mind. They're being positive. They want to make sure that they give Mark Pope a fair chance. You have the other side of the aisle that's all the way out. Unless they got Dan Hurley, Nate Oates, Billy Donovan, I guess. Which is kind of wild, if we're being honest. I know Billy Donovan won two national championships back-to-back -back in the same league as Kentucky. So that's... That's probably why there's this affinity for him, but he's been out of college basketball for 10 years. But you end up getting Mark Pope. Mm. And I think that there's this notion that they've failed. There's this notion that, for whatever reason now, that the boosters wouldn't be excited. And I just want to cut to the chase on this really quickly. How is it that you could ultimately want a guy like Calipari out 
And the reason that you wanted him out or the reason that he kind of got pushed out, bullied out, whatever term you'd like to use, we'll get into that in just a moment, is largely because of the donors, is largely because of the fan base. Let's face it, if the fan base had I don't know, realistic expectations, it's not fair. Let's be honest. Kentucky has, over the last five years, underachieved, and underachieved quite significantly. So the, the whole situation with Calipari is, we could all understand, it's, whether it's rightfully deserved or not, we could all understand why it happened. You backtrack into the idea that the, the vast majority, or, or let's just say a certain majority of this booster pool is going to be thankful that Calipari left. They are going to do whatever they can possible to make sure that over the next year, two, three years, that maybe they don't believe in the guy they got, but they don't care. They're going to try to make sure that he's successful just so they can spite the idea that Calipari was the reason they were successful in the first place. If you don't think that there's ego involved in regards to who made Kentucky tick, you're fooling yourself. So I was looking down the internet today, and I seen, I, I seen that there was a reporter that was suggesting that the vast majority of the Kentucky boosters are not going to be uh, likely providing NIL funds as they would have if they got somebody else, and that could be a huge detriment to the program. Are we kidding ourselves? This is Kentucky. Mark Pope was at BYU. They got guys that get fouled on the baseline that turn around and look at a guy and say, shut the freak up. <laughs> We're talking about two worlds of the universe. We're talking about two completely different things. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying they don't have standards at Kentucky, but I do know this. If they need to go get a five-star recruit and there's some things that are going on there, BYU might, be not, might not be accepting that. Kentucky is. Let's not act like Mark Pope's a bum. Let's not act like Mark Pope doesn't have a chance to be very successful at Kentucky. Not only that, he's familiar with the program. Like, at some point, there's a certain population of Kentucky fans that crack me up in thinking that no matter who they would have gone and gotten outside of three or four names was going to be a severe disappointment. And my question would be, what did you think was going to happen? What did you think was going to happen because ultimately, Dan Hurley is in a great situation. Nate Oates, you could convince me. Maybe there's a little bit of a scratch-your-head moment in that, in that area because you'd like to think Nate Oates, hot, basically, let's face it, I would argue Nate Oates the best coach in the country in regards to if you could start over with anybody outside of Dan Hurley, he's the next guy in line. And then Scott Drew said no. What are you supposed to do when a, when a guy that's very, very faithful, right, is very deep-rooted in, in his faith, comes out and says that God told him that he wasn't supposed to go to Kentucky? You have no choice other than just to respect the decision. Certainly, some people in this world are not motivated strictly by money. Now, we'll get into Rice and DeChambeau here in a little bit with the Masters. One would think that maybe some are. But my main point about this with, with Kentucky is... Mark Pope has every opportunity to be just as successful as Nate Oates at Kentucky. How many times, and I had it happen in my own fandom, to where you want one candidate, you get another candidate, and you're super thankful that you didn't get the first candidate. And I guarantee you that if you pulled Georgia fans, not to spin this around, but Kirby Smart wasn't, wasn't the sexy hire. It was the guy that was underneath Nick Saban. This guy that probably was riding the coattails of the greatest of all time. Why are we going to get some guy that's never proven himself? Well, he's familiar with the program. He went to the school, and he's had a lot of success. And you know what? I, I've never been more wrong in my life. That includes, that includes me saying that Brad Stevens was going to be the next head coach of Kentucky. Damn. So I've been wrong before. So Brad Stevens didn't accept the call, you think? You think that's what it was? He just denied the call? Or do you think maybe they never called him because that's preposterous? I don't think it's preposterous, to be fair. I think it's a little preposterous. Look, I, I, I'm no Kentucky basketball expert, but this is what you wanted. You wanted a fresh start, and, and there is no better fresh start than uh, with this guy. I have, a, I have a fun little clip for you of this guy, Mark Pope. Again, great basketball head coach. And if you're a Kentucky Wildcat fan, this is going to fire you up right here. Let's go. It's impossible for me to describe how much I love this university, my teammates, and you fans. 
but I'm gonna try. C A T S Cats Cats Cats. I love you guys. What more could you possibly want than that guy right Team there? Spirit. What more could you possibly want? If that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. I don't know what will either, if I'm going to be honest with you. Because, uh, again, you wanted Coach Cal gone. Coach Cal is arguably, maybe not even arguably, he's one of the best basketball coaches in Division Well, why did they not like Coach Cal? They, mean, did, they, they didn't like him because he wasn't executing up to their standards. And to, I, they, the I would say they didn't, like him. they didn't like him because, one – they were tired of having these NBA guys come in and come out. Like, they were told how good they are. They're a top pick in the lottery. They're there for one year. They leave. They don't like him because he's not a very good X's and O's guy. They don't like it because his ego is very, very big. He comes into press conferences, and he kind of slanders everybody that, that's, that's ever questioned him in any manner whatsoever. And they got, quite frankly, almost the complete opposite of that. So if you're a Kentucky fan, I'd have a hard time believing today if you wanted Cal gone that you wouldn't be somewhat pleased with the hire they just made. Yeah, I, here's the thing, though. I think it's not even about Mark Pope getting the head coaching job. It's that how they went about this, I don't think it was the right way. I, I, I don't think it was the right way. If, if it were up to me, and, and God knows it's not, I probably would have let Cal have one more year and wait till they knew they could get a decent head coach to replace them, a head coach that's going to meet up to the standards of the fan base and, and to everybody else uh, around the national perspective of what Kentucky basketball is. Because, because as of right now, you're hiring a guy that has an 0-2 all-time NCAA uh, tournament record. Yeah, That doesn't get anybody fired up. He, he coached, I think, Utah Valley. No, no tournaments in sight. Went to the CBI a couple times. It's just not a Utah name. Valley. Is he was at Utah Valley. Is that right? I think that's I'm right. just saying that's where he was at. I, I they, mean, how many Utah Valley victories do they have in the tournament? Two? I don't know. Utah Valley. With him, they never got there. With him, they never got there. So I, it doesn't even matter to me. It's, it's just, it's, if you're going to say Coach Cal wasn't living up to the standards and you go out and hire Mark Pope, I don't know how Mark Pope is supposed to uh, live up to the expectations that Cal didn't meet. Cal, despite what, every, what everybody in Kentucky land says, he, he was still terrible brought, he, over the last five correct, years. Correct. He still brought NBA talent. Every Kentucky <laughs> so what's team. What's it matter? Every, every team in Kentucky, most years, I would say, what, in 2020 they were bad? There was a couple years where they were bad. What does other, that matter? Other than that, they were still coming into each season uh, with hope and optimism that that was going to be the national championship contender. And for most of those teams – Obviously, up until the tournament time, up until the end of March or the middle middle of March, they could have been that. Yeah, but I'm a, I, you're the guy that has Wes Miller on the hot seat after a few years of not making the tournament. This guy hasn't won a conference. Uh, he hasn't won an NCAA tournament game. He's won one SEC and NCAA tournament game in like the last five years, and he's at Kentucky. He's at Kentucky. Like, there's no reason as to believe as to why they didn't want him out. That's more than fair. It brings me to my last and final point here in regards to the situation that is Cal and the contract and the buyout. Kentucky was looking to try to make a move, right? And I, the way that I look at this now is, even if Mark Pope's not the guy, even if he's not the guy, and again, I have not seen the contract, I've not seen the buyout, I don't know what all that looks like, but go Five ahead. Five years, five and a half mil, roughly a year. And I'd like to know what the buyout is, if that's the case. Like, what's if, if he were to get fired, how much they owe? Because ultimately... Kentucky took their shot when they realized they could get out of the buyout situation with Cal. That's 100% in my opinion why Barnhart decided, uh, you know what, go to Arkansas. Go to Arkansas. We're not going to match it. We're not going to ba we're not going to basically be in a situation where we want to continue to have a relationship with Cal and if it means we don't have to pay 30 million dollars by all stretch of the imagination I know that sounds wild but it seems like the administration's like who cares who we get I know that sounds kind of really bad to say like in that frame of reference but genuinely if you're going to save that much money and get rid of the guy that you wanted to get rid of regardless even if you're not in a good position, even if you don't think that you might get the guy that you ultimately want. You didn't get Hurley, you didn't get Oates, you didn't get Donovan, you didn't get Drew. So at the end of the day, if you didn't get any of those guys, then that's fine. We still save $30 million. And if it goes wrong, maybe a year for two years, then we'll reset and we'll find our guy. 
But what happens if Mark Pope's successful? Then you've, one, avoided the $30 million in the first place, and now you're right back on track. Do you think this is what Kentucky fans wanted? You, I would say you, this. When you, let me ask you this. When they all called for Cal's head and they said, get rid of him, do you think this is, this is what they wanted when they did that? Or do you think if they had a redo switch, they'd redo it? A majority of these fans. I, I don't think that uh, – I think – I don't think they would. I think that the folks that were out on Cal are going to be out on Cal no matter what, and they got what they wanted. They got the, the – again, they got scotch-free with the buyout. Absolutely unbelievable that they didn't have to buy out his, uh, his contract, which is what many people thought they might have to do if they wanted to get rid of him. But they didn't do that. He left on his own accord, and now you find yourself in a position where you have a fresh start. And quite frankly, the exact opposite – of the things that you hated about Cal, Mark Pope brings. He's a good X's and O's guy. He understands offense. He's got a fun offense. How many times? The, the reason that I think the frustration probably grew in Kentucky was because, one, they didn't win. If they would have won, of course nobody's going to get on Cal. But more importantly, the, it's even more frustrating to know that you have all this NBA talent. How, how pissed off are you as a fan if you know you have two lottery picks, two lottery picks, and you're out here struggling with Oakland. And I know you can convince me Oakland's a pretty good basketball team. Blah, 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 blah. Please, save it. St. Peter's was good too, I guess. At some point, you're Kentucky. You got five-star recruits all over the place. Correct. You know what? If you're a good coach, you wax those teams. You wax those teams. They're not, they, don't even, they don't even stand a chance. And what ultimately ended up happening with Cal that I don't know if they would have ever gotten over in the first place was the pressure just kept mounting. So when they, when they enter the tournament next year as a three-seed or a two-seed and they go play that first set of games, because let's face it, it's not just the first round. It's really the first weekend. If Cal gets bounced out of the first weekend, it's the same, it's the same as if they lost in the first round. Just because you make the round of 32, no one's really going to care. Correct. So my point is, is they're going to play a relatively tight game or what I would call consider a tough game in that first weekend. And it just seems like the pressure that was going to mount around that program to, to continue to – to get over the proverbial hump, per se, was going to be significant. Let me ask you, I'm going to ask you one more question before we end this segment. Please. How short of a leash does he have? Cause you, I, I Yeah. Because I talk about – talk four I talk, years. You think four years is, that, is the window? And long as it is long, I don't again, think to be so. clear, as long as it doesn't go completely off the rails, he's got four so. years. Absolutely. If, absolutely. Unless he's winning three, four, five games or something crazy in his season, if there's some scandal, whatever it may be, he's going to get four years. And you know what? I think he'll be a serviceable, a serviceable um, coach, head coach. Well, I, I think that's fair, and I, I, for for all intents and purposes, I agree. I think he's, I, I don't think he's a bad head coach. He 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 was pretty successful at BYU. He didn't have a lot of tournament success, but other than that, I thought he, he brought BYU basketball back a little bit to, into prominence. So yeah, I think he's, a, I think he's a good head coach. I think he's a good hire. I just don't think the the University of Kentucky went about this the right way. I think there could have been a better way to do it. Uh, and unfortunately, I think it's going to leave a lot of these fans disappointed. But we'll see. I think the leash is short. I think if he misses the tournament this coming year, and, and then that, that next season he's struggling, I think he's gone after that year. That's what I think. I think, it's, I think he's two missed tournaments away from, from being fired. Uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. The good news is for Kentucky, though, they don't buy. They don't have to pay. Uh, they don't have to pay the man to leave. And then they turn around. And they save a little bit of coin on the uh, back end of that. And the crazy thing of all of it is, they might just have more success than they would have if they had went out and spent a billion dollars on trying to find somebody that's been out of the uh, college basketball for ten years and Billy Donovan as well. I think Mark Pope would have been and is a better hire than Billy Donovan. We shall find out. All right. When we come back, we're gonna. Give a, uh, we'll give an update on the Masters. Tiger, he tees off. Just, uh, he just teed off. 10-18, he's on the course. When Tiger leaves, does golf die? Or how big of a dip does it take? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about new heights and what that means to uh, Southwest Ohio and more importantly, Cincinnati. And then we'll finish the show with some Reds talk as always. That and more on 1410 Wing AM. All right, welcome back into a Friday edition of Off the Bench. 
Presented by United Dairy Farmers. This is a, a situation here today where I'm doing my best to, uh, as I said before, focus. Focus, Elliot. We have a lot of names. You have half the leaderboard, which is, a, which is just preposterous. So, I, all, by we, the way, all the, names, we, all the names I picked are doing terrible. Yeah. It's well, terrible. That's, that's not a shock. And uh, here's the thing. I'm going to give uh, some, some advice, um, or at least what I think is, is good advice here on this show. Um, if, you, if you're one of those folks that gamble, in one, you should do it responsibly. And if you have a gambling problem, as always, you call 1-800-GAMBLER. But if you, have a, if you have a very responsible gambling uh, habit, as we will say, then, then one thing that you shouldn't do is get yourself in a position where you have so many bets on one specific thing that you forget what you even have in the first place. Now, that's the, that's the issue that I have right now with Mr. Elliot Rearing. Sure. Is that you have literally half the field. So on one end, you're rooting for, you're rooting for like three or four guys, and then you're rooting against another guy, and then you're just trying to – like at some point, don't you just throw your hands up in the wheel and just, just say, hey, Jesus, take it, please, and I'm, I'm done. I just, I just, I'll check the leaderboard at the end of the night. Yeah, I mean, you could certainly do that. You could certainly do that, but I, I'm not going to. I'm going to fight with every stroke and every, and, and, and every tee shot that these guys have, and that's what we're going to do. I, these are my guys, all 30 of them, and I'm going to ride with them until the very end. Out of my, out of my 20 guys that I bet to win this thing, I think uh, three of them are under par. Yep. Three and of I, them are under par. And, which, and is I, which is tough. Which is tough. Mike Ackley, he says he's shocked that I'm not doing well gambling. Uh, Drew Garrison says, fade the zebra shirts should be made. Listen, I've, I've never proclaimed to be a good gambler. Every once in a while, I have a good couple wins, and that's what I'm still up for. My bets aren't dead yet. They're not dead yet. Tiger, as he pars the, the, the first hole of the second round, I'm not dead yet. I've, got, I've still got fight in me. You, now, I, you mentioned something before the, before the break there that I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. Is there another athlete, and, and I think we kind of saw it with Caitlin Clark, is there another athlete that is more important, that's more vital to the, the success of that sport than Tiger Woods? No. I think I remember watching Colin Coward, I, and, and it was a couple years ago, maybe three, three or four years ago he did this. Um, he said he was going off on some of the, the things that uh, Tiger Woods brings to the sport when he's playing on a given uh, weekend at, at a given PGA tournament. The sales of golf balls for, I think, Nike, when he was a sp still a sponsor of Nike, sure. went up a, like a million percent. The viewership, a million percent. The, the attendance at these golf courses, up a million percent. And that's just this guy. Because I'm not, and, and I'm, I'm not going to lie, it, on a Sunday with, with, of this Masters tournament, I'm going to watch. But a regular Sunday, if Tiger's not in it, it is a little hard to get up for it. Because now golf's in a state where I don't want to say, I don't wanna say it's, it's in a bad place. But with Live Golf, we don't know where we are. We don't know where we are. Some of the more marketable stars in the sport, you don't see them anymore, except on major weekends. Those are the only time you see these guys. I was, I was going over my picks, and I'm like, Brooks Koepka can't do it. He plays on live. But, like, that, it doesn't really, that shouldn't compute like that. It shouldn't compute like that. At some point, the PGA and the Masters need to figure it out. Or PGA, excuse me, PGA and live needs to figure it out. And, and I'm hoping it's soon. Because as of right now, it's Tiger Woods is the most marketable PGA star who doesn't play on weekends. And then you have Justin Thomas and Jordan Spieth, I'd say, probably, right, are, are, are the next marketable names to the sport I, it, in, in the, the PGA. There, 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 there's the analogy that is the freezing point that I like to use from time to time that I think is very relative when it comes to the game of golf, right? It doesn't matter how, how cold the, the water is. Once it's 32 degrees and or below, it freezes. And my main point is, is that I don't think there's that many golfers on, on, on tour and live, quite frankly, that get below the freezing point. They might be chill. They might be down in the, in the, the 40 degree mark. But let's face it, golf is going to hang by its thread that is Tiger Woods until Tiger Woods can't play anymore. And, 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 and to be honest with you, they're going to hope and wish and pray that they can find one more guy that has some, kind, some type of greatness. You go from Nicholas to Tiger – and certainly there's great players, Palmer. There's all these guys that are great players, but no one's going to ever move the needle, in my opinion, like Tiger Woods has in my lifetime. I don't now, I could be wrong about that, but I don't think that there's going to be. Now, is, is the game of golf going to be in a bad spot? I don't know. I don't really think there's that many people that give a rip about the game of golf, period. And then on top of that, when you add in the fact that people that actually care about the game of golf, I think they, 
They'll transition and they'll watch either. They're going to either be the casual major viewer or they're going to be the ones that want to watch every Sunday evening because it's just something that's on TV and they enjoy the game, so they watch it. I don't really I don't really don't think that the game itself is in a bad spot. You know why? Because I think if anything, the accessibility of the game has never been higher. The popularity of the game has never been higher. I don't I don't there's a, there's a vast majority of people that go play golf now that they, that they're used to be. That's the, 100%, the, the, that's that's true. The accessibility of golf courses 100% is significantly better. Um uh, it's still obviously a what I would consider a pretty uh, expensive sport, but it's nowhere near the country clubs of old where you had to be literally a millionaire to be able to play the game. So that, that game of golf has that going for it, um, but this is the biggest weekend of golf all year long, without question. And Tiger Woods even having some semblance of relevancy for it makes it a bigger deal, certainly. Let, a, we a all. I, mean, it, we, I don't even think that's rocket science. If, if Tiger's even remotely in contention on Sunday, the viewership will exponentially increase 100 percent, and this is no knock on the sport of golf i think the sport of golf's in a great place i i like you said i think once COVID happened it brought more eyes to golf or the actual sport the like average people going out and playing it 100 percent. do you think growing the game is an overrated thing in sports period no you know you hear all these guys well i'm just saying you hear all these guys talking about live and in 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 the pga and it's like oh we want to grow the game and now that's a bunch of you know, we know, we know what that is. Uh, we can't say it. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, hogwash, I guess, is the term that we'll use here. And the reality is, is that those guys that decide to go to live, they, they'd made a personal decision that, you know, I can't say that I'm mad about because it's a significant amount of money. But no one's trying to grow the game of golf. And I'm also wondering to myself, is that even a big deal anyways? How I many think- times does, 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 does Major League Baseball is about growing the game. How about you just make it accessible to watch on television, and that's probably going to grow it enough. Well, correct, but that's growing the game. That's, that's, that's where guys like Rob Manfred don't get it. They don't understand it. I think growing the game is important. I, th- I think getting new eyeballs to your product is absolutely worth it. The issue is, I do agree with what you're saying, live guys coming out and saying they're growing the game. They're not growing the game. You're getting a paycheck. You're setting your family up for life. And, and your kids' kids and then the kids in the next six generations – Everyone doesn't have to work anymore because you went and played for live and you sold your soul for a couple years. That's 100% true. Nobody on that tour is growing the game because nobody watches them. Nobody. I, I, I see little clips of them on the CW in between the Animal Network or whatever the hell's going on there with top five funniest dog breeds or whatever, whatever the programming is right before they come on the air. But it's a joke. Live golf is a joke. I, I don't understand. The, the format seems like fun. That seems like a fun event, like what you would do like once a year type thing. It's like a President's Cup type of thing. Everybody can have teams. We can play teams for a day. But that's not golf. That's not golf. It, it, it's golf is what you're seeing on the Masters on Sunday. You're seeing a leaderboard. Every guy is fighting for himself, uh, trying to be the top of the top. Yeah. This is, the Live Golf doesn't get it. And, and whatever, whatever they're talking about growing the game for, it's not working. It hasn't worked. It will never work. The only thing they have is money, and a lot of it. Just nobody cares. An infinite amount. And that's where I think, and that's where I think golf is, is in a bad spot because you're seeing half the, half the, half the sport getting paid $100 million. Winner of the Masters, what do they get this year? Two mil? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. We can pull and, that and I, and I know, I, and I know a lot of these guys don't necessarily want to win the Masters for the money. Right. But you do. I mean, it, it's it, these, well, this is your livelihood. This is it, yeah, it's winning winning two and a half mil. I don't know what the purse is for the Masters this year, but it certainly helps. I, I, I'm just saying the sport of golf right now is is in a place where if Tiger Woods uh, is starting to wind down his career, and I think that's pretty safe to say he is, he'll always play at Augusta. He'll probably play at Augusta for the next ten years. But saying that. He's not going to be playing in British Opens much longer. He's not going to be playing in the U.S. Open much longer. And once that allure of Tiger Woods leaves, I think you're in a tough spot. I don't know what marketable star the PGA has left. Yeah. I think you have Scotty Scheffler, who's the number one golfer. I love Scotty Scheffler. Great guy. Great human being. But he doesn't get me going on a Sunday morning. He doesn't, he doesn't get me excited. He's just a boring golfer, a boring, average, really good golfer. I like how you called him an average. He's far from it, but average, I understand average what you're in saying. terms of Tiger Woods is doing fist bumps. He's wearing red on Sunday. It's fun. You want to watch him. Sure. Average is average is is not that. I would suggest that if if Scotty ended up winning as many majors or was as successful as Tiger, I don't think it matters. People would watch greatness because they enjoy watching greatness or they enjoy rooting against greatness. For those that are wondering, it's three point two million for the first place. 
uh, winner. It's an $18 million purse overall. So certainly there's a, a significant amount of coin on the line in these tournaments. But they, the, the folks that are going to Augusta, they're already pretty wealthy people more times than not. I'd say the vast majority of them, outside your amateurs and your guys that just won a tournament that, that allowed them to qualify, pretty significant amount of these guys are pretty pretty well off uh, in regards to money. So they, uh, they're, they're more focused on trying to get themselves a green jacket, which has some prestige, which is pretty cool. You know why it's cool? Because for a, guys that are, for a lot of guys that are millionaires that are playing golf, um, there's very few times a year where they are actually playing for something more important than just the money. There's four times a year. Maybe you could argue five because the players at this point is becoming closer and closer to what people would consider that fifth major, but it's not. So it is what it is. Golf, it'll be fine. It's going to be, it's going to be just like all the other sports though. Who, who's Everyone's going to next... act like it's bigger and better. And the reality is it's just going to stay the same. Who's going to, who's going to be the next tiger? If you had to Scotty predict, Scheffler is the absolute closest tig- th- 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 thing to Tiger since Tiger. I thought Jordan Jordan Spieth was on the path. He's well, fallen off the path. I think it just goes to path. show you. It goes to show you how hard golf is. There's a lot of guys that are going to have success over a three, four, five year window. Tiger did it over 15, 20 years. That's why he's Tiger Woods. I mean, there's a difference between uh, basically good players and great players, and then great players and all time players. And Tiger Woods is an all time player. All right, uh, new heights. Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey, you know, the podcast. How many folks went down there yesterday evening hoping they were going to see Taylor Swift and didn't? I'll tell you why that is relatively meaningless, but there is something pretty important about what's going to happen now, I think, with that New Heights podcast and the University of Cincinnati. That'll be just after this on 1410 Wing AM. All right, uh, before we go back to the radio, really quickly. Yeah. Um, we have a few more segments, I know that, clearly. But more importantly, let's do uh, any, any uh, chat things that we need to get through, and then we'll do our ads now. Um, I was seeing – I kind of want to have some fun with the chat for a minute. There's – let's see here. There is – I think that there's a fun debate going on in the chat or there's a there's a debate that i think is worth having in the chat i think we have a good poll question of the day okay we all list a sport that we think in 20 years will be significantly bigger than what it is now significantly bigger than what it is now okay yep it's got the biggest growth we're going to talk percentages so if you're going to say the game of baseball the, the game of baseball is going to have to be like right there with the nfl for it to probably be pretty significant of a jump does that make sense correct um i have a sport i have a i have a uh what sports yeah i think i think um i'm gonna go with lacrosse it's a good one that's a good one Elliot, you got a thought on this? I'm between two. I'm I'm gonna say What are your two? I'll tell you mine too. I'm gonna say either I, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna take one of the chats, but it is true. Pickleball is certainly something. Pickleball is uh, definitely one. And I'm going to say I was watching last night um uh bowling. I think bowling can get bigger <laughs> okay. on TV. Bring on TV? Bo- yeah. Bowling on TV. People are gonna start watching bowling. But, I'm, but my official answer, I'm going to go pickleball. In what world is bowling going to? I don't know. I was watching it last night, and they were doing some sort of team bowl. where So they each have five guys on a team, and one guy rolls at a time, and they rotate. So each guy gets like two throws for their team. I thought that was electric. You know, I that wouldn't have been a bad answer if there wasn't so many people that already – just go strike strike so so often like the big moments are going to be when they don't get strikes that's going to be the like oh my god they didn't get a a strike there i don't think that is good for television that's fair it's different when it's like oh my gosh he hit a home run oh my god colton says mma huh colton says mma mma is really big though 
I don't know if it's big. It's big. I don't know if it's as big in America yet. Like, I don't think anybody's sitting around their Saturday nights. Not, or not enough people are sitting around on I, the average Saturday night saying, I'm going to watch MMA. I certainly don't. I think they would have to change the business model of it being pay-per-view for it to really blow up. MMA isn't pay-per-view, though. Is it? It is. It's both. I mean, there's pay-per-view. The big fights are. Oh, the big fights are. The, the I mean, it's always going to be pay-per-view, right? Yeah. I don't know. Does boxing ever come back? I was going to say I'm biased. I am very biased. I love boxing, but I, 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 I would pick boxing. That would be mine. Boxing? Yeah, I, I just think that things are cyclical. Like there's, there's things that come full circle. All we need in this country is another Mike Tyson, which I know that's a lot to ask, but at some point there's going to be another Mike type Tyson that's just going to be knocking everybody's heads off, and uh, it's going to be the, it's going to be the, the, the reason that boxing went away is because one, it's uh, corrupt. Two, it's disgusting in regards to the way in which people can hold on to belts. And uh, the last thing and the last reason is because this country and almost every other country, for the most part, loves heavyweights. They love the heavyweight division. People watch boxing matches to see carnage. They want to have uh, knockouts. They're not looking for technical. They're not looking for technical body shots and scoring on points. They're not looking for those. They want people to to be basically uh, damn near crippled when they walk walk out of the ring. And uh, we need an American heavyweight. American heavyweight to bring back boxing in this country. I, I hope it comes back. Not have and, that. And I, but I, I think, I think there is, there is a world where people still will get together on a Saturday night somewhere in the future, and they will pay. What is my it? favorite thing here about this? I look over, Casey McAllister on the on the on the spelling bee. Yeah, we. Knew I, mean, just, I mean, just, it's it's just uh, Casey. Suit, Casey, you want to talk about that before we go on the radio? Or? Casey, all you forgot was the e there, so just say. It was, yeah, no big say, deal. Say you were rushing it. I was rushing it. He was yeah. rushing it. I was rushing. He was he was trying to rush to get on there. Is pickleball two words? I, I think that's one word. I'm <laughs> sorry, you're fifty percent, Casey. I think it's okay. I, I mean, this is just yeah. I mean, Casey, not much Casey, suit. Casey. Uh, you know, I, I I'm just curious. At what point in your life? At what point in your life uh, did did um, did you realize that spelling just wasn't your thing? <laughs> Yeah. What, second what grade. What grade? Second grade second when grade? I failed second grade English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every spelling test was a disaster, Trace. That's when I knew. This is can why we, this is why can I, we play when, when can I we, chose engineering. You failed English. Here's what we're gonna Damn do. Damn it, Bobby, we speak English. Here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Here's before we go back to radio and we get back to very serious sports talk show as I talk about Kentucky basketball. Here's what we're gonna do. Casey, I have in front of me two dollars yeah i'm gonna give you a spelling test right now live on the air and if you can do it successfully you will get these two dollars this is this is a joke this is u.s currency here we go the first word avenge just like the avengers do you would you like a sentence (laughs) i don't mean to dance avengers no just avenge just avenge avenge yeah don't look at the chat the chat's not allowed to help (laughs) i'm not looking at the chat i'm not looking at the chat a V, yeah. E N, yeah. G E. Correct. Ding ding ding. Yeah. Hit the ding. All right. Now they're gonna get a little harder as we go. You know that, right? How many are we doing? Three. Okay. So we got three more. Yep. Okay. So this is a this is a a big word that's used in the Masters. It's topical. Foilage. Oh, foilage. Uh. F O I L A G E. You got it wrong. Hmm. He got it wrong, but just for fun, we're going to spell the third word anyway. You ready, Casey? Yeah, what's up? This word is uh, paraphernalia. I'm not even going to attempt to, to Good. That. You got a chance? No, not, right. not a single chance. $2 has been revoked. Spelling bee failed. Trace is just so disappointed. <laughs> Trace, would you like to try? I'll give you the same opportunity. No. He doesn't want to try. All right, then let's is read it. Is it F F O I L A G E? F, uh, what'd you say? F O I. No. No? Foilage? No. Foilage. That's how I tried to spell it. Is there it. a trick word? F O L I A G E. Okay, so the L. Foilage. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't. Uh, the, the restaurant's always the one that always gives me fits. They're oh, saying Craig, I can't. Craig pronou- is calling you out. They're, well, they're saying I mispronounced foliage. Yeah, I mean, that's. That's tough, Elliot. You don't even know what did how to you pronounce say? the words. I don't know. I thought I said foliage. I don't no, know you said it. foilage is oh. what you said. All right. Well, foliage. So, I mean, 
I was set up for failure is basically what the chat is getting at. Let's get in the ad since uh, we're, we're – <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Casey. Go ahead. The Encore Technologies Report is brought to you by Encore Technologies. They provide IT solutions for a data-centered world with a suite of services from old computing to desktop to data center, supporting both centralized and work for home computing <laughs> modules to improve efficiency and yeah, productivity. productivity. <laughs> That's right, Trace. Thank you. The path to innovation begins here. Visit Encore.tech. And let me tell you about this lovely bottle of water right here. What is it? You hear that? No, what is it? It's Pawnee and water. It's oh, made it's right here in Hamilton, Ohio. Uses natural limestone filtration, filtration, unlike the artificial processing of the brand's use. The result is a healthy alkaline water, and some say the best tasting water in the world. Visit Pawnee Water at P-A-H-H-N-I water.com to see where you can buy this great tasting water. That's right. Are we going back to the radio yet or no? No, we got one more. No, we don't, actually. No, we don't, because it's only on Mondays. Man, you weren't there for that because you were in the bathroom. Really? Oh, that's right. Yeah, you ran off. It's yeah. only on Monday? Well, we found that out yesterday, yeah. I see. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so let's take a five-second uh, pause and go back to radio. All right, it's 10.52, just so we're all on the same page here. And we finished three segments. Uh, that before, means we have three before more. We, before we get back on the air, um, I do want everyone to know that uh, Tom, he's doing his show live, correct? That's correct. And that will be around what time? It uh, should be around 12. Right around 12. So that means that that we today we're gonna go we were gonna go to twelve ish, yeah. Our, our attempt to get to twelve. Who knows? Maybe we'll get there. Yeah, I, I don't think so. But we have three segments left, so here we go. Maybe we'll get there. <laughs> I don't think we're getting there. You don't think we'll we're gonna get, get there? there? I have the under. We'll get yeah. there. Well, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, Mouse cop saying box lunch is dead. Michael wants call-ins. Everybody wants something different. What happened to box lunch? They're asking in the chat. Is it just because uh, everybody's been around running around with their head cut off? And yeah, I would say that's a part yeah. of it. I mean, there's yeah. n- there's no – when we – like, we would like to have box lunch planned out a little bit. Yeah. Last couple times we've just been kind of, like, free-flowing it. Right. Because we need to do something for them. It's not dead. It's just we've been running around with our heads cut off. It's just we'll hi- get back to it. It's in hibernation a little bit. Yeah. Um, fair enough. Tiger Woods. Speaking of Tiger Woods here before we go back to the radio. Um, he's looks like he's got a birdie putt on too. The 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 question I have is, do you think this new logo looks decent? I love I love his new logo. You, you love it. Get in there. That's, oh, uh, that's a tough look for Tiger. Tiger just uh, two inches, not even two inches. What would you consider that? Two a centimeter. Two, two centimeters. Two centimeters short on uh, what looked like a birdie putt. And if it wasn't a birdie putt, then uh, shout out for a bogey. But uh, yeah, it's a birdie putt. So oh, that's a brutal mess. That's tough. That's a tough. Tough look for Tiger. The um. Final parting thoughts here before we go back on the radio? No? no. Nothing? Nothing. I'm good. You're good to go? Okay. So, programming notes. Tom will be on around noon. Uh, Kenner. Kev won't be, but Justin Kenner will be, uh, will be doing his show today at some point just after Tom. Here in the studio. Yeah, in the studio. Live. In the flesh. So, tune back in for that. All right, um, let's do our let's do our uh, traditional uh, five second break here, That's and correct. then uh, we will uh, jump back into here into some very 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 serious sports talk today on this Friday edition of Off the Bench. All right, welcome back into hour number two of Off the Bench on this lovely Friday that is Masters Weekend. It is always presented by United Dairy Farmers. Gentlemen, uh, over the break, we were kind of having some fun there discussing uh, different, different uh, what would we call sports that have a chance to make a comeback in this country or grow the most. Correct. Uh, for, our, for our radio listeners, we came up with the, uh, the sports that are lacrosse, pickleball, boxing, and soccer. Um, I think it's fair to say that maybe uh, MMA could have been a part of this running and then maybe one would argue it can continue to grow and grow and grow, although I do feel like it might have. It, it's not peaked. But uh, if I were buying stocks, I don't think I'm buying the MMA stock. It feels like it, uh, it's already kind of uh, exceeded its value. But right now, of all of the sports that I just had listed, pickleball, pickleball, 
is making a run. I just don't know. I don't know how I. I don't know how that would end up being a um, a watchable, enjoyable viewing experience, right? Because the most capable thing for a sport to grow is the viewing experience Correct. on television. Correct. The problem that I have with pickleball, gentlemen, it's not that I don't think the game is fun because I've never played it, and I would assume that it's fun. It looks. It looks fun. It doesn't really. It doesn't really provide a good viewing experience. It's like this. Tap the ball back over the net barely. Tap Correct. the ball back over the net barely. Tap the ball back over the net. And then it just becomes a little, if I can say it out loud, boring. Yeah, but that, I, I think, I, I mean, it, de- it depends on what your definition of boring is because people watch tennis and that's what tennis is. It's quite literally tennis. But tennis a, is a little more athleticism, no? It's, well, it's definitely more athleticism, 100%. It's but it's, it's, I would argue pickleball might be faster just because you have, it's more, it's more twitch, it's more twitchy. Uh, I, I don't see a world where any of these sports, I mean, soccer obviously is already, I mean, it's, soccer shouldn't even be on the list if we're going to be honest, but the other three, I, I do think, uh, lacrosse has a chance to get big. And I think, um, I do think boxing eventually, eventually will come back. I don't know when, but I do think it will. If I were, if it were up to me between those options, I'd pick boxing. Do we all agree that there's like a market for another major sport? I think the point. answer to that is unequivocally no. no. I think we've matched. I think we've maxed out our major sports. Yes, I. I and in fact, I, I. I could argue that hockey would make a pretty good run at some point, maybe in this country. But that's still a major sport, right? Yeah. The major sports in this country seem to be so dominant that it's hard for me to imagine um, f- they're becoming like another major one. sport. Lacrosse, I guess, has made a pretty good run in the sun here, but I don't know. It Do has- you think that there will be? I don't know. I just feel like as time goes on that we just keep getting bigger, media gets bigger, it's easier to grow. I don't know. I feel like maybe there might be at some point a, a, a disc fifth golf. or six. Disc golf. Disc golf's fun. I don't think anybody's watching yeah, it. I don't. I don't know how you're going to fill an arena to watch pickleball, disc golf. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of those things. Soccer already is, is, is massive. So no, nothing, nothing can, nothing can – uh, grow more than soccer has already grown i mean i guess in the united states i guess you can say yeah. i guess that, that's why i put it we've on done this how many states. times are we going to do this we do this after every olympics we do this after every world cup it's the soccer's going to make a comeback in the states or soccer's going to end up being the biggest uh sport in the states and it just never happens you know one thing that i just had mentioned and we talked about this on the radio and on the show many of times now is that uh carnage is what many people enjoy watching right mma is taking a huge leap in regards to viewership, and it is a very, very, uh, what we would call, you know, grotesque sport, right? Yeah. Uh, I would venture to say that there is a there is something that I think would be fun if it got a Netflix, and that's what this all comes down to. If, if there's some media company that covers it at a high level, and let's face it, Full Swing made golf a little more popular than it has been in the past. The biggest thing that's happened is the F1 circuit in this country yep. has taken a huge leap. And that is largely just based off of the Netflix. Um, what's the, what's the actual title of it? I don't know. If is it drive head. to survive, drive to survive. Thank you. Is that right? I think that is right. Um, that is ultimately what would, what would allow something to propel to uh, new heights, which we'll get to in just a second. Uh, my thing is this. That was good La- thank you. The last thing I was going to say about this is could, could uh, you ready for this? Maybe this is a little bit of the uh, Hamill Tucky coming out in me. You ready? Mm-hmm. You think we could get some, um, uh, like a crash derby? What are those called? Like those monster truck things? No, 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 no. Like uh, you know at the fairs where they just we, they 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 just wreck cars into each other. Oh and no! The last one standing. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Why but- can't I think of the name of that? Somebody help me. Help me out, chat. I think that's right. Is it what is it? What right? is it? What is it called, Casey? You don't know either. We have three but, guys in this room, and no one knows what I just explained. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the answer from the chat. I don't no know one knows. Demo, so, derby? Demo derby. Demo derby. Yeah, demolition derby. Demolition Thank derby. you. Thank you. Demolition derby's got a chance. If if it got if it got it's, <laughs> demolition derby. No, no, does listen. Not have a if chance. You, oh, please. If you think that uh, what was it? Storage wars. Is that what it's called? Yeah. If you, I want you to think about this. Storage wars. Uh, a little bit of Pawn Stars and a little bit of uh, a little bit of just people having uh, you know maybe smoking some cigs, drinking some drinking some uh, dynasty, drinking some uh, no free ads, but maybe some pilsners. You know. <laughs> yeah. 
and then just wrecking cars into into each other. You don't think there'd be there would be very entertaining drama in a circuit of that? Yeah, I I'm actually thinking to myself now that I'm saying it out loud. If I could just get some little bit of uh, what we call some venture money, if we can get just a little bit of uh, funding here. Uh, some people think we already have it. I, I hate to break it to everybody, but we don't. If I can just get a little bit of money, I would love to get a league. Just let's just get a league. We'll go from town to town. We'll film it like Netflix. And if you think for a second that that wouldn't be unbelievably entertaining, I think you're wrong. I think it would be very entertaining. I think people would go to it. Nobody would watch it on TV, but they'd certainly go to it. People are watching that on TV. Are you kidding? I don't know. I don't you don't think that like a Netflix documentary of, of well, basically like, falling around like six different you, families? Who are you cheering for? Well, some, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, somebody's going to become a hero. Someone's well, going to become a villain. Well, who's what do win? you mean? You just crash cars into each other. Nobody really wins. It's just chaos. No, there is a winner at the end of every single derby, and it's the one that's got the running car at the very end. Everyone else's car dies. Have you never been to a demolition derby? Nobody's ever been to one. I've never been. Casey, have you I been to a demolition derby? I think you right derby? now are, be, are, you are showing your public school, wealthy, I've, come from to, money I went to side of your life. Parochial school. school. Parochial. Private school. And private school, excuse me. What I say? Public? Yeah. My apologies. I didn't, mean, way, I didn't mean to demean you that much. Either, either way, uh, no, I, 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 don't, I, will not be, I will not be attending that. But. Reed Mouse had a good point. I can't believe this right now. I mean, this show is going to go off the rails at this very moment. You're telling me that you've never seen a demolition derby? I, I know what it is. I've never been. Why would you I go? You clearly don't know what it is because you said that nobody wins. I, I, all I know is I, I've seen it in the movie Herbie. You ever see Herbie fully loaded? <laughs> oh Herbie fully loaded. Lindsay <laughs> Lohan and that Herbie car. They drove around and they were in the demolition derby. And I think Herbie survives and, and the Herbie's the winner. I've never loved an idea more. I love this idea so much that I genuinely want to. I, 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 I got I to gotta think through this. I, I, I know for a fact there would be unbelievable storylines. Are you kidding me? If we go in and we find six, six Derby families that, you know, perhaps maybe they don't have uh, what, what many would consider everything in a, in a straight era of path. And we just made, if, if you got Netflix behind it, you threw, you threw out like uh, every race was worth $25,000, life-changing money for many of these families. You would have some very, very, very serious stuff. And it would be incredibly entertaining. The only some would say at the expense of others, but that's not what I would say. The only other thing that Reed mentioned in the chat was esports, which I'm not really counting esports. But in, in other they, countries, they fill out stadiums for it somehow. They, I don't, I don't, I don't they understand do how it works. They do in America. They do in America. Yeah, that's man. crazy. That's just it, it, that is crazy. And I guess esports is technically a, 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 the right answer, maybe because it's certainly growing. Who's that guy on TikTok that everybody keeps saying "What's up, brother?" For what's that guy? Oh, uh, what's his name? Reed would know. What's sketch. who's the what? Sketch. 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 Yeah. What's up, brother? What's what up, up, brother? What's up, brother? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Tuesday, like Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Watching guys play video games has definitely become. Uh, yeah, but you're watching sketch because it's entertaining, correct. not because you want to yeah. watch. Not because you want to watch the actual video game. Yeah. If he, we're being completely honest. Not at all. Speaking of entertaining Mr. here, Mr. really Mo's quickly. Mr. Moe's me uncultured, by the uh, way. Listen. Speaking of entertaining here, really quickly, Elliot. If I if if Chatterbox were to sponsor a car. If we were to sponsor a car and get it into one of these demolition derbies at a county fair, uh, would you consi- Would you drive it? I would never drive it. Would no. you drive it? No. Just what for, do even I for have content, to gain? For content. No, sure. I'll tell you what. For we con- have to pay you. What if we paid you if to you drive it? If you paid me, I'll do it. In fact, I, I'm pretty sure. Can someone in the chat help me out? I'm sure that some of these county fairs, well, first of all, you wouldn't win because I think that they actually team up. They have like these little bands of, of teammates that, that all – they don't wreck each other until the very end. It's, it's kind of uh, – let's be honest. It's not, it's not the best spirit of competition. But uh, let's just say, for instance, you got into a race. There is a chance to win money in these races. You need to know that. Yeah, but I'm already a bad driver. So then I, I don't have a chance yeah. to win any money. Well, I think it's mostly just I think just people like, would just see it and laugh at me. They'd see my car, they, and they'd get run over, and I'd die. Well, isn't that part of the? Uh, isn't that part of the character that is Elliot rearing, or no? Well, I mean, sure. Some I, would say I guess. that's exactly what the zebra is. At some point, I'm going to retire and go out and do something else. I, I just, I, I don't know if I want to die. We should just. I don't. I can't die in my own bit. That's what I can't do. I, I I'm a bit. Everybody knows it. But listen, I'm not going to go out there and drive a car into death and die. Yeah. For the bit. Don't you think wrecking cars or, or smashing into cars is, is actually it's good that you just said that you're a bad driver? Don't you think that actually works in the favor? 
Well, I don't. I, I would drive really slow, and I drive the speed you limit. You do drive slow. Do they have yeah. seatbelts? I know do that. I, to to say, I know that for a fact. I've never seen a guy drive behind a tractor trailer as long as Elliot Rearing did on what uh, would you have been some more random at? highway. What would you have been Arizona? more mad? At? What would you have been more mad at? More mad at me for in that trip? Yes. Getting three tickets for speeding. Or going what I did and going slow and responsible. Well, here's the thing with you is that you would do both. So what you would do is you'd go really slow for a long time and then randomly I'd be laying down there in the back and then certainly I look up and he's got the videographer over here with the camera on the speedometer and he's trying to hit a hundo. Well, the, so, so, so not only so, so not clear. only were you going slow, so not getting anywhere, the but limit. then you give yourself the chance to so, not only you get your chance to get pulled yeah. over and arrested. So we're clear: the speed limit was eighty-five miles an hour. Right. Eighty-five miles an hour, and you were trying to get it to what? I was trying to get fifteen miles over the speed limit, and I never got there. So everybody can calm down. Everybody, the, the van was incapable of going hundred miles an hour. It's probably a good thing. It's probably a good thing. Trace did it too, so all he can't say he didn't do it. All right, I know the folks that are in Dayton right now are like, I thought this was a serious sports talk show, and you're right, it is. Oh, so we'll have it, it is. New Heights. Casey, I sent you a clip of uh, Kelsey talking about, uh, I, believe, I believe this was right before the show. He had uh, a media press conference, what was it like to be back in Cincinnati, yada, yada, yada. Uh, I don't care too much about the, the Kelsey's or the New Heights podcast. It, it, for, it was a sellout crowd. I, I didn't think that was going to happen. It was a sellout crowd at Fifth Third Arena. It was it was uh, via Chad Brendel. It was it was all the way filled to the rafters. So shout out to the Kelseys uh, for bringing some excitement back onto the campus. This was Jason right before uh, the show talking about maybe Joe Burrow playing for the Bearcats. When Joe was uh, transferring out of Ohio State, I sent him a text on behalf of uh, Cincinnati, trying to lure him to the university. Um, I still, you know, it's. Who knows what could have been. He could have been such a great player if he would have just come here. Uh, but unfortunately, with the LSU. And, but uh, I think, um, you know, he, I've been such a big fan of his. And at the time, I didn't know much about him. And coaches would reach out for me to get involved with recruiting. And to be honest, a lot of times I don't get involved because I don't, I don't want to sway. I don't have – let the, the kid make the decision. I don't really want that much. But Luke was adamant that he could really uh, change the program and – um, you know, it, it didn't work out for, for us in that matter. Well, in some ways it did because Desmond Ritter got more experience and then he turned into the player that he did over his tenure. So I think both sides ended up winning out. But um, I think ever since then, Joe and I have been uh, connected in some ways and uh, was, was honored that he – am honored that he's going to be here today and uh, looking forward to talking to him. That's our boy. That's our boy Jason trying to, trying to get Joe Burrow – the leader of this city, to become a UC Bearcat. Didn't work. Yeah. But it could have worked. Yeah. What, have, the right what, what could have been? What could have possibly been? Who knows what would have happened? Um, but it, as he mentioned, it worked out for both sides. All right. Uh, I think the new, ha- the new Heights thing, actually, there's a different angle that I'd like to take with this that I think is relatively important. When you enter into a big conference, a big league, uh, you're going to run up against schools that have a significant amount of money when it comes to boosters, and then that ultimately at one time, pre-NIL, meant you had the best facilities. And if you had the best facilities, then usually you could give the best recruiting tour. And if you had the best uh, recruiting tour, then you would win more times than not when it comes to getting some of the top prospects. And you can add in other things. It's not just facilities, but obviously the coaching staff. And if you have big boosters more times than not, you pay the best, you get the best coaches. That's how this works. It's very similar to society in a way, right? It takes money to make money, and once you have money, it becomes relatively simple, or becomes relatively easier, I should say, to continue to make money. And the thing about Cincinnati is they find themselves in a very precarious position right now with the fact that these Kelsey brothers that at one time were, let's face it, they were no names. They were just guys that were playing in the NFL, and what they've become now are superstars, very well known. And they still have an affinity for the university. The university's best opportunity right now when it comes to become more competitive when in, in, in the grand scheme of things with NIL and then coupled that with, uh, with just booster money availability is the Kelsey brothers. There is no one else that UC can turn to right now that has more of an upside. We talk about ceiling with players. We talk about upside with players. There is nobody 
that has more of an opportunity than you see to capitalize on the situation that is the Kelsey brothers, and they're doing a good job of it. And it looks to be a two-way street. The Kelsey brothers, they love Cincinnati, and Cincinnati certainly is doing everything they can in their power to create opportunities to recruit and, and, and garner money. Last night, Jizzle James, he won, of all things, a spelling bee. But, but you know what ultimately I know and ended up happening there was that was an opportunity for him to make some money. And that's what this can ultimately end up being for the University of Cincinnati. And I think it's, it shouldn't be kind of like looked upon as this, you know, oh, it's a fun little cute event. I think behind the scenes, this could make a big impact. Now, I don't want to go down this crazy rabbit hole that is obviously who Travis Kelsey's dating. But I will for just a moment. Of all of the opportunities that exist in the world, that's the biggest one. If that were to end up becoming a solidified thing, and next thing you know, more times than not, we know how it goes. Yes, you might kind of have a girl that you meet that's a fringe. They're a fringe sports fan, but they don't love sports. What do they ultimately end up doing? More times than not. They follow in the footsteps of their significant other. They root for the team that maybe their husband had root for. Maybe it's the opposite relationship where the husband roots for the, 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 the team that his wives root for. But ultimately, you become uh, one as a team, and you root for the same, same programs. And there won't be a bigger program that the Kelsey brothers root for as a collective unit than the University of Cincinnati Bearcats because that's the only commonality they would have outside of maybe national type of things. So my point to all of this is saying is if you were to tap into what we would call that Taylor Swift money, UC becomes a whole nother world. Now, whether or not the, the, the Taylor Swift wants to become a booster or something along those lines, I'm not suggesting she does. But I will suggest that there's so much money there, Elliot. There's so much money there that if, if that were to become an ask or they needed something, Taylor Swift is going to find herself in a position where at some point there's, there's something that she would probably like to support that Travis enjoys. UC's praying to the gods that this is one of them. Am I wrong in thinking that this is the biggest opportunity that UC could possibly have? I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but it's the one thing that I think could give UC a leg on, on uh, what we would call the blue bloods of every sport. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. You I think I th I'm stretching that too far? I think that's a stretch. Mm. Correct. I think, it's, I think that's a stretch. I think people have already made, made up their minds. Uh, the blue bloods are the blue bloods. Nobody's changing it. Nobody's getting into the club. Uh, these kids are getting paid X amount of dollars. If, 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 if money can certainly uh, get up to whatever Alabama and – in Kentucky, whatever their NILs are up, then yeah, kids will come if you can get the money. Uh, it has nothing to do with Kelsey. It has nothing to do with Swift. It just has to do with money. People think I'm crazy for thinking that. I I guess maybe I am. I just think that if you have a very, if you have a relationship, you get married to somebody. The next thing you know, ultimately you end up having kids, and 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 you know you're you're you are legitimately in a relationship with someone. They Travis Kelsey is going to continue to love UC. If UC basketball is somewhat relevant. Do you do we not think that do we not think that Taylor Swift's going to be in press boxes with Travis Kelsey watching UC games? Sure, but I don't know what that does. I don't know what that does. You don't think that there's a chance in the world that 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 she starts to understand the game just a little bit, like not the game itself. What the but hell are we talking about? She, <laughs> I'm not talking about the game. I'm talking about she doesn't understand. Like, hey, I, how come some of these other programs get the best players? Well, they pay the they pay the most. Okay, well, if I write a Ten million dollar check that literally falls out of my pocket every other day is that would that help? You don't you don't think that's possible? I don't think it's possible. I think it's very possible. I don't Maybe think, I'm naive. I, I, I Maybe don't think I'm a dreamer. I don't I don't think it's possible for Taylor Swift to head up the UC NIL fund. I'm not saying she's going to head it up. I'm just saying it's one phone call to say, hey, could, could we need some support in this area? Could we use some help? We'll name we'll name a building or we'll name something after Travis. I you, I think that that's I don't know. Love does, love does some crazy things. Love I'll does leave it some at that. crazy things. I don't know if it does that crazy other thing. We'll <laughs> see. We'll see. I guess I'm an idiot. I mean, that's what people are saying. People are thinking I'm an idiot for that. But we shall find out. I think the New Heights podcast, I think the opportunity of Taylor Swift becoming uh, uh, engaged slash married to Travis Kelsey over time, them starting a relationship or a family, I should say, if that all ends up being a thing, that could be the biggest thing that ever happens to UC Athletics. Now, I could be, could be completely wrong, but something to think about.
Something to think about over the weekend. All right, another thing to think about over the weekend is going to be the Cincinnati Reds. They play the White Sox. We are going to talk about that just after this on 1410 Wing AM. All right, welcome back in to 1410 Wing AM. We are rounding out our show here on a lovely Friday. I can't wait to, uh, I can't wait, quite honestly, to just get back home if we're being completely fair and honest. I love my job, but I get back home, I sit on the couch. Yeah. Maybe I get a cold beverage and I just turn on the TVs and I just watch nothing but golf the entire round and the entire weekend. And I know people think that's absolutely boring and that's perfectly fine. My wife thinks I'm an idiot for watching this stuff, but you know what? Just who I am. I can't change it. Yeah, I, 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 if, if I was able to, uh, I would. I'm going to watch all day on Sunday, and that's what I'm looking forward to this weekend. Uh, s- give me some more sports to watch. So I, 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 I get your feeling. I get your feeling. Uh, do we have an update on Tiger, by the way? Did, I, I've been missing what he's been doing up there. I, I, I haven't seen anything. But uh, we were talking about spelling bees with Jizzle James. I did a spelling bee on the YouTube show. If, you don't, if you're listening over the radio, Chatterbox Sports on YouTube. Uh, I did a spelling bee with Casey and Trace. We're going to do another spelling bee question real quick. Because I have this list of words up here. Please. And I want to see if they can get it. So I'm going to ask each of them a word. Uh, and if they can get it, they'll move on to the next round of the championship round. Trace, your word. I just want you Hydra- to know Taylor, Hi- Swift's, Taylor Swift's net worth is $1.1 billion with a B. Correct. But you, know, get- you, know how much 10, you know how much $10 million is to her? It's like literally, I'm not trying to be disrespectful to you. It's like a nickel to you. I'm, I'm being told Tiger just birdied as well. Yeah, and I understand. I have a hard time. I have a hard time believing Taylor Swift is going to contribute uh, to UCNIL in a major way. I think she'll contribute, uh, not not in a way that gets people to. So you think so? So, so you think she'll contribute, but not in a major way? Well, correct. What, what the hell does that your, even mean? Well, because in your scenario, they're going to be married, and, and I think uh, Travis will be like, "Hey, I'm going to give a million dollars to UC today." And she's like, "Okay." I don't think Taylor Swift is going to burn her money giving it to college NIL, so UC has a successful football program. I think that's silly. It could happen. Uh, I doubt it, though. I think, I, think, I think Taylor Swift has better things to do with her time. Uh, but getting back to the spelling bee. Hydrolysis. Trace, that's your word. Hydrolysis? Hydrolysis. H-Y-D-R-O. L. Yeah? L. Nah, one L. Damn. Casey, your word is iguana. <laughs> iguana? Yeah. Um... I G U. Yeah. There you go. And oh. <laughs> tough. <laughs> that All was right. brutal. Iguana is spelled I G U A N A, not N N. Yeah. That was tough. Is that uh, it for this segment? No, this segment we're going to talk about the Reds. Well, uh, I meant like that segment is in like your spelling bee. Yeah, that's yeah. it for the spelling bee. All right. Bee. Glad you're uh, tired. Make Elliot spell something. Turn the tables. Yeah, we'll do can. that. We'll do that at some point. Yeah. Uh, all right. Here we go. We have uh, some Reds. Some Reds news, I guess you can say. Yeah. If that's what you want to call it. Yeah. Let's uh, hear it. So the Reds take on the White Sox uh, tonight. Will be Andrew Abbott taking on uh, Flexen, Chris Flexen of the uh, White Sox. I didn't know he was on the White Sox. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, Flexen has a five nine ERA, and, and Abbott has a three four ERA. Uh, Lodolo, he is making his long-awaited uh, return to the Reds on uh, Saturday. That is tomorrow against Crochet, the White Sox, who's very, very good. That'll be a very good uh, matchup. And we have Graham Ashcraft taking on Mike Soroka on Sunday. Soroka is a, has a 6-1-4 and four ERA, and Ashcraft has a 5-4 ERA. The White Sox, they have started this season 2-10. and 10. They've lost all four series, obviously. Um, and the White Sox were four games swept last weekend. Uh, against the Royals. The Royals are red hot, to, to be fair. Uh, they were outscored 20-5 to five in that four-game stretch. The, the White Sox already have, in the first two weeks of the season, lost their best player, Luis Robert, for two-plus months, and Juan Moncado possibly for the entire season. Uh, it is possible that Eloy Jimenez will return off the IL this weekend against the Reds. He injured himself with an ad- adductor issue uh, the first series of 2024. The White Sox are cursed. I, we talk about we talk about uh, cursed, and especially in Cincinnati, we think the Reds are cursed with all these injuries. The White Sox are just brutal, man. Uh, every single season they lose their best players due to injury, and every single year they disappoint the city. 
Uh, absolutely brutal. But uh, some of the positives, Gavin Sheets for the Sox is off to a great start. He's hitting 333, uh, two home runs. That's a 1.159 OPS. Um, ben Attendi, DeYoung, Nicky Lopez, Rex Grossman, Martin Maldonado, uh, PR, I, all these guys struggling. Uh, I, I, I think this is a series. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's a must win, but it's a must win. The Reds have to win this series. They have to. The White Sox are atrocious. The Reds are about to embark on a gauntlet of a schedule. You have to eventually take care of business against the trash. You have to take out the trash. You did it against the Nationals. Some would say by miraculous circumstances, but you did it. You beat the Phillies in Philadelphia. You have to beat the White Sox. You have to. The Mets got red hot. Maybe we played them at the wrong time. So the Mets, are, the Mets have been playing pretty good baseball since they played us. I don't, I don't see a way uh, or a world in which the Reds lose this series because I don't, I, you have to win it. At some point, this team has to be different than, than the years of the past. We have Ellie De, La, Ellie De La Cruz, CES, Spencer Steer. Eventually, you have to win a series like this. This is a garbage team in a garbage city. Win it. Win the series. Uh, I love Chicago. Yeah, I, 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 I didn't love it, if I'm going to be honest. Well, that's probably because you just didn't know how to drive. Well, that's what the rumor is on the, on the street is, I guess some some would say that you ran over a median and were going down a one way the wrong way in the middle of downtown Chicago. Mm. Not me saying that just that was the rumors on the street. Yeah, I guess um, I'm just saying you is gotta- this our, our Harrow's asking in the chat um, by this is a little bit of a funny. Um, I know that the radio crowd doesn't know the inside jokes here, but would, would you say uh, Harrow wants to know is this is a must win series. This is a must win series. The Reds, mm. the Cincinnati Reds have to win this series. So on April uh, April twelfth, must win series, right? Yeah, and Nick, yes, you did. I messed up that as well. That that's my bad, Nick. Uh, I, <laughs> I I I thought of Rex just then. Um, other than that, listen, the White Sox are rebuilding. Win win the series. I'm not asking for a lot here. Can you take two against the White Sox in Chicago? Is that a ton, Trace? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, going on here, uh, we have. Spencer Steer, he's tied for the MLB lead, obviously, 15 RBIs. He's hitting 372. He ranks fourth uh, in that category. OBP, 471. He ranks second. OPS, he ranks fourth as well. Ellie De La Cruz is tied second in Major League Baseball with 13 runs scored and six stolen bases. Uh, Brent Suter, born in Chicago. Is this, is this the revenge game for Brent Suter, a revenge series? Uh, he moved to California when he was two. So probably not. Nick Martini, born and raised in Crystal Lake, Illinois, 45 miles northwest of Chicago. Another revenge game. Uh, he, re- he went to Prairie Ridge High School. He grew up a Cubs fan. He recorded his first MLB hit on June 23, 2018 at Guaranteed Rate Field when he was with the A's. Nick Martini coming in hot. How long does Nick Martini have, by the way? Uh, two weeks at most. Two weeks? At most. I would even maybe maybe venture to say a week if he struggles and doesn't get any hits at all. It all comes down to what he ultimately ends up doing. What's going on? What, what do you think is going to happen once uh, we have Ian Jabot healthy? Because Nick Martinez, obviously, they skipped his start, uh, what was supposed to be his start yesterday. So they will be moving him to the bullpen, I presume, to make Nick Lodolo a spot in yeah. the rotation. I thought they were doing a six-man rotation. I don't know. I don't think that's going to happen. I have a, I have a hard time believing that's going to happen. what we were told. Well, if that happens, I'll be shocked. I, I think Nick Martinez is going to go to the bullpen. He, he struggled as, as a starter. He can give you two innings, two solid, three solid innings out of the pen, and it helps everybody out. It's a win-win-win. The only other thing is, though, if you're making room for Ian Jabot, mm-hmm. who would get the spot? Because I think Buck Farmer is the one that has to go, but I, I don't think Buck no Farmer is going to get cut because they just paid him. Well, he doesn't have options either, so there's Correct. that. That's what I'm saying. Um, I know that Fan- Fernando Cruz obviously at times looks like the best arm in the pen, so uh, what do you do with him? Um, I don't know. Every time we do this exercise, you know what ends up happening, right? Somebody gets hurt. Somebody will get hurt. Somebody will go on the IL, and therefore they won't have to make that hard decision. Seems to be the case every single time. I've done this what seems like every, what, Four times every uh, every three months in, in in the regular season, yeah. <clears throat> and I don't think there's been one time that has actually come to fruition that they've had to make a decision and cut somebody. You know, gastritis pops up, or that's fair. Things like that. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, Nate wants me to read before we head to our next break. Uh, Nate wants me to read the weather report in Chicago. Yeah, what is that? He says they call it the Windy City for a reason. It is a high of 60 today with a bunch of wind emojis on my phone, which is where you can get the weather game will be played thank you nate 
That was very good. Uh, we will give our predictions up next on four, e, what is it? ESPN 1410 Wing AM. Did I get that right? That's correct. I got to start. I got to start memorizing these things. Uh, that is it. ESPN 1410 Wing AM. We'll go to break. We'll come back. Talk more about the Reds. Five seconds. You just made that cut a little more difficult on you there. You say no. Yeah, that was. That was, that was tough. You want to keep rolling it. You want to. Yeah. I mean, what you just did right there was you were like, next on 14, 10, wing AM, five seconds. Boy, you got a quick, you got, yeah, that's, that's going to be a, it's going to be a tough cut. Well, let's give it five more seconds. All right, welcome back into 1410 wing AM, our final segment of the day. Mercifully. Mercifully. Mercy, 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 mercy. I'll tell you what, Drew's act, uh, it's Drew, been a long Drew, week. Drew's making fun of me because uh, he's saying, act like I've worked in radio before. Yeah, you, you've you never worked, worked, worked radio in radio. Have you, have you worked in radio before? <laughs> it's funny you guys ask. Yes. I did work in radio before, and I'm back. I'm happy to be back. Yeah, I'm ESPN sure Day. I'm sure they're happy to, to have you back. I'm sure that they are thrilled to death on ESPN Radio. Elliot Rearing, the zebra, yeah. is back better than ever. Um, okay, final segment. The Reds, uh, you had just mentioned before we went to break that you think it's a must-win series, which is a, which is a ridiculous thing to say, if we're being honest. Like, I, I think that, that at that moment, when you said that, Elliot, I had come to realize that Elliot is out of things to talk about. He's completely out. He's on empty. How, and speaking of empty, um, on that trip, we were very close to, 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 uh, to emptying the tank on one of the occasions. Are you just a quick fun question about uh, maybe get to know Elliot really fast? Your, are are you a guy? Are you a guy that fills up your tank if it gets even remotely close to E, or do you let that thing go all the way to the light? I usually let it go pretty far down. I I, I, I know my car and I know its capabilities once you get down to the end. Do you wait till it hits the light or not? Does uh, your car even have a light? If we're being honest, uh, no, it doesn't have a light. But it, it so it tell it does tell me like it'll give me a beep. It'll give me a sound. Yes. If, if so, I go until the sound. Yeah. There was a moment on the on the trip. If the, for those of you who don't know, on the radio, we we took a trip. We ventured across the world in a van uh, to Arizona to Las Vegas. It was preposterous. But coming out of Las Vegas, I will say there was a moment where I think there was thirty miles or so to the nearest gas station, and it was like it was it was it was begging to get be on empty. I think I think if we would have kept driving for another five minutes, we would have stalled out there. Wow! But yeah. we didn't. All right, good driver, Elliot. No big deal. The Reds, they play uh, at Guaranteed Rate Field. My wife's not very happy about that name. I don't, I don't think I hate the name. Speaking of names of Major League Baseball parks, well, we are very fortunate in Cincinnati to get lucky that the, uh, the, the advertiser, if you will, of said ballpark is a perfect name for a ballpark. Sure. Right? What happens when that uh, – I guess I have a quick question that we don't know the answer to live on the radio here is how long is that Great American deal for? At some point, does Great American Ballpark run its course, or is that a, like a lifetime thing? Because it's a perfect name, but at some point, if we're being honest with ourselves, we all know what ends up happening with naming rights. It, at some point, it's going to fall uh, at, its, uh, at, at its death, and that is of all the big names. The Carrier Dome was probably the biggest name of them all, right? The Carrier Dome, Syracuse, ends up changing its name. When is it, Casey? So the deal was on uh, 2003, and March they 31st. signed. Yep, March 31st, and they signed the deal for 30 years for 75 million dollars. Holy smokes! 30 years, so 2033 is when it'll be opened up again. Unless there's been some other like renegotiations that I just have not seen, but that's just what the initial deal was. Is it crazy to say? That when you told me they signed a 30-year deal, I thought, man, that'll, uh, that's like my lifetime. Now, clearly it's not, but I'm just saying like, and then you said it was over in 2033, and I had to, my brain just got warped right there for a second. That, uh, yeah, it's, I guess it's coming up somewhat here relatively soon. Considering you said 2003. Yeah, I mean, that's somewhat soon. Well, somewhat we're, like, soon. We're, we're, we're three quarters of the way there, right? Yeah. My math. I, Probably not perfect there. Yeah, I guess but. that's I guess that's right. Uh, I it is funny though. Somebody in the chat said uh, Haxium. I don't know if I said that right, but that is what who who is listed in the chat. Sure. He says DraftKings ballpark is next. That is next, and yeah. that is going to be very funny. 
I, I, I hope Cooperstown is sponsored by FanDuel. I really do. I, I, ho- I hope and I pray every day when I wake up in the morning that, that the MLB goes so far into gambling that they just have to stop being uh, two-faced about it, two-sided. I'm just tired of it. Don't gamble on your sport. Everybody knows that. But if, if you're going to condone or be anti-gambling to a point where uh, it's, it, it, it disgraces every name that ever does it, maybe you don't take sponsorship money from every gambling company in the world. But it is coming. Draft you are coming. very high on that take. Well, yeah, because I think that's the right. T- I think that's. A, I think it's preposterous. If, if MLB was anti-gambling in general, and, and this is again what Shohei Otani did, and, and shout out to that guy. He's going. He, he's the, maybe the all-time fall guy ever. I don't know how many years they're going to put him away for. They're but not, I, they're, you think he's a fall guy, or do you think? I mean, there's a federal investigation. You think that it, you? So you think that there's some uh, phoniness going on here? You think he's? You think that he knew? I have a hard time believing Shohei Otani didn't know that he was losing sixty million dollars. Yeah, I have a hard time believing. Maybe, maybe that's just what money is to some people, though. I could be wrong on that. Maybe if you're just so rich, sixty million is just nothing. You just don't even know. I have a hard time believing that's the case. If it is the case, doesn't he have financial managers as well? Like, yeah. isn't there? there there's got to be more than one person. It can't just be a translator that has access to all of his accounts. That can't be a thing. By the like, way, Mr. Mo, uh, underage drinking is illegal. Gambling is not illegal. That's that's the difference there. Um, but yeah, I, I I think he's a fall guy. I think he's absolutely the fall guy. I could be wrong on it. Doesn't matter. Uh, by the way, sixteen it, million dollars is a lot of money. I don't care how wealthy you are. If you if you have sixteen million dollars escaping your account, it's, it's it is a hard it is a hard position to be in to explain that Otani didn't at least know about it. That's the part that really I, uh, that I have a hard time believing. It'd be one thing if he said, you know what? Uh, yeah, my friend, he has a gambling problem. I allowed him to kind of gamble on our end as, uh, from a credit standpoint. I value him a lot. And uh, it kind of got out of hand, maybe more so than I, than I even believed. But the idea that he's saying that he didn't even know that a single dollar was gambled, I don't know how you believe that. And maybe it is. Maybe it's true. I'm not trying to suggest for a single second that Donnie... And that's the other point of this uh, conversation here really quickly that we could get into is like, there are a lot of people that seem to be rooting for Otani to be guilty. I don't quite understand that. Well, I just think... I, I think once you hear a story like this, you almost just want to see it for the drama. And I think that's what this is. It's just a big drama. And I think it changes the sport, certainly. It changes the landscape of the sport. And, and not to mention he plays for the Los Angeles Dodgers, a team that's pretty unanimous, unanimously the villain of the league. So, yeah, I think people are cheering for the, for the story of it. Correct. Should I, you I, be? I don't know. Probably not. But that's, but that's what it is. But that's 100% what it is. Uh, Mr. Mo says, underage gambling is also illegal, like Roger said. How is nobody's condoning underage gambling? Nobody is. MLB is against gambling in general. That's all gambling. They're against, they're against every, so every type of gambling that an adult does. Has I nothing disagree to do with, with that. that. They're against gambling for their own employees. They're, they're, they're against gambling of the players. They're not against gambling as a whole. You think when you walk into the when you walk into the facility, I understand. When you walk into the when you walk into the facility and you bet on football, you're going to get in trouble. I was going to ask that question, and I want to. I want to be very clear. Our viewers and our listeners probably all don't. I, I do want there somebody to to put a stamp on this. Are Major League Baseball players allowed to gamble on sports outside of baseball? The NFL's the NFL is not allowed to do it on their premises. Yeah. So I imagine MLB follows the same rule. Okay, so you're suggesting they're not allowed to gamble while they're at the workplace on anything, but Correct. when they're at home, they're allowed to make a wager on football. Uh, perhaps, yeah. Yeah, which again, Maybe. so I think there's a very clear there's a very clear line in the sand here that MLB you could argue they are they're not against gambling, they're against their players gambling on their own sport, which I think are very two distinct different things. And I think it's I think it's more than capable of saying they're not hypocritical when saying they're they will they will allow their fans they will allow uh, their players to consume a product as long as they don't they don't have any part of that said thing uh, kind of dictate the integrity of the game or have an impact of the integrity of the game. 
which means you can't allow your players to gamble on their own sport. As we all know, it's a very obvious reason as to why you can't do that. Sure. I don't think they're being hypocritical. You obviously think they are, which is fine. That's your take. But I don't think that it's crazy to think that a, that a league could offer – sponsorships to a certain brand and then not allow their certain you know their players to consume in it same as same as if same as if you if we ran a a uh i got a question for you if we ran a split the pot or we ran some game that we've done around here from time to time right a giveaway some ticket giveaway or a money giveaway is it fair for us to is it fair for us to be a part of the games where we're allowed to win sure uh, sure. I, 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 all, my, my, whole, my whole entire point is, is, is that it's pretty hypocritical the MLB to be anti-gambling. Your players can't gamble on baseball. They can gamble on everything else. Just don't gamble on baseball. You can gamble on some things. Don't gamble on other things. It's just, it, it just you're, and again, RM in the chat says it, you're tiptoeing a line. You're tiptoeing a fine line. That's, that's, my, that's my entire point. Well, it's the same thing as the NFL. I mean, are you against all professional leagues? I think if you're against gambling, or? you're against gambling. I don't think you should be against, you should be allowed some gambling and not gambling. Some you're allowed to gamble on some things, you're not allowed to gamble on other things. That's what I think. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I, listen, I don't think there's a reason to argue because I think we have just two completely different viewpoints of it, and I'm sure there's a certain population that believes what you're saying is and and I get the I get the sentiment that you're making. I'm just suggesting that I think you could have both both angles. I think it's very. I think it's very easy to say. Hey, if we do, if we do a fifty-fifty raffle, if we decide to do some kind of contest here at Chatterbox Sports, I think it's easy to say. Hey, we're not allowed to partake in it. We're not allowed to win, because at that point, you're you're very much jeopardizing the integrity of the contest. Same thing the MLB, MLB the NFL, and all these sports leagues are doing. You can gamble if you'd like. You can't do it on our grounds, and you can't also do it <clears throat> on the very sport that you play. Seems pretty straightforward. Pretty simple. All right. I agree. I agree. I think if that's the stance you want to take, I say gambling's bad. Gambling's bad. Don't do it. Don't take their money uh, because it allows that into the sport. It can, it, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tempt some, somebody to bet on the sport. And I would say don't do it at all. But they're going to do it, and they're going to continue to but do then, it. But then I would make the case that I think that if you were to go down that path, which is a, which is a, which is a valid path, like it's, it's a, if, if you want to have that take, that's a fine take. But I would say that very much is the same semblance of alcohol. It's the same exact concept, in my opinion, which is if you're, if you're going to advertise alcohol, right, then ultimately you're, you're in, in a way, you can't then go blame the Reds because somebody decided they were going to either underage drink and or drink and drive. Like there, there needs to be some semblance of responsibility by the third party or the individual party on what they're doing and whether or not it forms to the laws that we've set as a country and or as a company. And the, the fact is, is that the MLB, they made their rules. Guess what? Don't break them. If you want to be a part of it, you want to get paid, don't break them. If you think it's hypocritical, you know what I would say? I would make the counter argument to what your argument is. Yeah. I would say if the players don't think it's fair, I'll say something that's preposterous that no one would ever do. Guess what? Don't play in the league then. Don't play in the league. Go find another league that you think is morally right. Calvin Ridley was suspended for betting on NFL games. That's what he was betting on. And he plays in the NFL. Correct. Still. Right? He played last year. He got year. suspended, yes. He got suspended for a year and he came back. Mm -hmm. MLB has a lifetime ban for gambling. Okay, so you have an issue with, li the, with you have an issue with the punishment, the penalty. I, no, I have, a, I, have a, I, have a, I have an issue with the hypocrisy of everything. I, the NFL, again, they, they make a punishment. You're gone for a year. Fine. He's able to come right back. He's able to come right back. The MLB, no, no, no. If you gamble in the sport, you're gone forever. You're never allowed to enter a ballpark again. So it sounds like you have a problem with the, the punishment still. Well, because the punishments, it's all part of it. It's all part of it. MLB has the stance that gambling on baseball is the worst crime that one can commit. But at the same time, they take money from gambling companies. I don't, I've never understood it. I don't understand it. When you have a when you have a bet MGM uh, sports book in your ballpark, by by the team that has the most famous sports gambler in the history of the world, I have a hard time believing that's uh, I I don't know that's right that's fair that's just and I think that that's a very fair and valid point that you make but it's not it's not it's not centered around the reality of the universe at all I mean we all know that money drives 
most decisions in the world. And quite frankly, if there's millions of dollars on the line, uh, there's going to be some folks that are going to look the other way from a moral high ground standpoint. Because if, if it was all about moral high ground, as I said before, then essentially you would be against the major, the major vehicles that make ba basically make broadcasting an oper like a, a, a possibility. The only reason that we're able to watch the Super Bowl, uh, you're able to watch all of these games on television, the vast majority of the reason why, and people aren't going to like to hear this, it's because of things that society would generally deem as probably a negligent or a negative thing. It's alcohol. At one time, it was tobacco. It's certainly, uh, there's the opportunity of, of gambling ads now. Vegas obviously runs ads. They want people to come out there. They call it Sin City, what stays here, or whatever, it's, whatever the phrase is, right? What, what happens here stays here. Like These things are not morally correct, but it makes the, it makes the, 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 the broadcast or the companies possible to consume, so they take it anyways. They're going to take the money. So I just think at some point you got to put the onus on the individual because, again, we live in a free society, which is what we love probably most or many love most about our country. And you know what? In a free society, ultimately you have free decisions to make poor decisions. That's correct. And at some point you can't make the poor decisions and then turn around and blame the institutions as to why you made the poor decisions. I think it's very fair what you're saying, though. If Basically what you're saying is if MLB really, really hated gambling as much as they say they do, which is a lifetime ban, you can make the clear argument that you shouldn't take money from them at all if you care that much about it. And if you don't care that much about it, maybe we shouldn't make a lifetime ban. Correct. That is an excellent point that you would make, yes. And I think it's very fair. All right. Um, I guess we get to the part of the show where we have anything left to add before we head off into the sunset, as some would say. No, that was it. That brain's just completely gone. 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 Long week. Gone. <laughs> You got anything, Casey? You got a spelling word? Uh, no, no spelling for me. Um, that 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 can be saved for the uh, the rest of the the show that we do here on on YouTube. If you haven't checked us out on YouTube yet, please do so at Chatterbox Sports. That's right. We go live on that platform from ten to twelve. You're listening to us on ESPN fourteen ten Wing AM from one to three. We appreciate it. Go check us out. That's right. And all, all of our socials, too, at Seabox Sports. Uh, we are very appreciative to be on the radio. Uh, Justin, he will also be on our platform today. He's going to be on, obviously, 1410 as well, but he's going to be live in the flesh. As a reminder, Tom, he will be in the, uh, in the studio here in just a short bit. He's going to have a uh, big interview. Do you have the big interview name, uh, Casey? Yes, it's Stan Conte. He's the director of... Uh, medicine for like the Dodgers and the Padres and mm. another sports team probably somewhere in California. Nice. But yeah, I think he's going to give us some insight on uh, some of the, the stuff that the, the players are saying about pitch clock and stuff like that. Fair enough. I, that's a very, very, that's intriguing. I think that the pitch clock for whatever reason is getting the brunt of the blame. We'll find out maybe if he thinks that's something that's of, a, of, of actually relevancy or is it just hogwash that the MLB PA is putting out. Um, <clears throat> I just want to say this. You enjoy your weekend. If you don't like golf, that's fine. I get it. You don't need to like golf. What you should do, though, is if you get a chance, just turn on that CBS station. No free ads. You turn on that CBS station. You listen to Jim Nance say, hello, friends. You watch the last couple hours of that final round. Just get you some popcorn. Get you a nice beverage. Enjoy yourself. If you aren't anti-gambling, Maybe throw a little bit of a coin on maybe a dark horse there that's a couple shots back, and you just enjoy your Sunday evening. And then we'll talk about it on Monday. Why? Because we come your way every single day, Monday through Friday, from 10 A to 12 P, which means we'll be back Monday better than ever. This has been Off the Bench, presented by United Dairy Farmers. Have a good weekend, everybody.